where to begin I tell you the Olympics this week I don't know where to start I don't know where to end uh, there's been a lot happening uh, yes so here's the breakdown uh, so yes the, the where to even begin with the Olympics this week I myself was embarrassed at how much I was tweeting about the the Mori drama and yet it kept generating like new things that were sort of worth sharing um, so let's go back I think this was uh, actually last week that we talked about uh, <laughs> the gaff was that la was it, has it been more than a week I think I think it was last week I covered this but certainly yes uh, so Maury yes uh, in his um, uh, sprightly 83 year old um, yeah, you know, former prime minister who was basically forced out of office for being so embarrassing and saying the wrong thing all the time. Uh, basically, yeah, he, he made an offhand comment at a dinner uh, with uh, Olympic Committee members in the presence of uh, newspaper journalists who asked what did, the, what did he think about the idea of having 40% uh, quotas on all Olympic committees as being recommended by the IOC. And he said, well, you know, women... You, you put them in a meeting and you know they feel like they have to prove themselves all the time they get really competitive and they speak too much and uh, they, they cause the meetings to run longer so that's just a thing and uh, yes that was uh, immediately sort of condemned as one defending the idea of not allowing increased participation of women which is desperately missing in all aspects of the organization of the Olympics here in Japan and, and reflected a mindset that you know that it's good not to have women and that they were detrimental to participation even though when people looked at okay well how many women have been on committees with him and the result the answer was not very many he went for the rugby world cup um only one woman was on a commission for that and she went straight to the news and said yeah i think that was me uh and i don't think i talk that much <laughs> and then they asked him where did he get it from he said oh i heard it from my friends who who know women i i don't i don't even i love women you know some of my best friends are women i i you know i i just heard it um you know so he kind of did all the, the normal dodges and weaves but you know the outrage generated by the comment and, and it wasn't just the comment it was the fact that as i said last week the mo most surprising thing was that maury hasn't said this like every five minutes since he's been in the role he's done great i suppose if you think that he's gone a whole year somehow holding this in because if you know Maury you know that this is absolutely what he sincerely thinks so yeah we got to this point where um you know he he did the inevitable um kind well he, he did the bow and I retract the comment and apologize if uh you know I apologize that you misunderstood me and it was a it was actually a terrible apology he actually turned on the people who asked him questions and kind of started it, it wasn't even a very heartfelt apology and he immediately disclaimed aspects of it later on saying well you know but women do actually make them take longer <laughs> you know he, he sort of it was the worst apology ever however the IOC had said it was over um funnily enough Nikai the guy who I just said wants to do the um go to travel campaign um he, he was like yeah you know um some people might be offended by comments like that but they'll get over it and forget about it right away they're just being emotional <laughs> so you know all of japan's finest and most enlightened minds were chiming in helpfully on the topic and of course the result was that um when you have a lot of volunteers uh, remember who are making an enormous commitment in the preparation and during the games themselves they'll be stopping their normal jobs and they'll be doing their, their volunteers they're doing all the stuff for the olympics for free and this is in the midst of a pandemic which everyone thinks it's a terrible time to be having the olympics anyway and you know remembering that athletes are probably going to be bringing it in it's going to be dangerous it's a, a stupid idea and on top of it you're doing it giving up all of this time and making these commitments for an organization headed by a man who just clearly has uh, contempt <laughs> for women um and, 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 and that was laid bare in, in in the layers upon layers of statements he was making first following the gaff um the other thing that was happening was well, lots of people 740 in fact the number tokyo the tokyo government reported that the number of people who uh filed uh resignations as volunteers um saying that it was because of mori's comments uh, ended up being over a thousand as nikai said nikai said yeah you know they're probably just being emotional and they'll get over it right away um, but yeah the um, it sort of escalated where with even though the IOC said it was done um, the number of people com calling the Tokyo uh, prefectural government complaining that you know how you're spending our tax money on a, a campaign being run by uh, this this jerk um, and of course remember the the minister for the Olympics uh, Seiko Noda as well uh, so Seiko Hashi Hashimoto uh, I think and uh, the 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 Tokyo 
governor are both women, right? And, and of course, the reactions to this, the, the, the Olympics minister was mortified. The Tokyo governor said, uh, this is absolutely wrong-headed. And these are both very, very conservative politicians. Um, and it actually came to a point where the IOC president, uh, Bach, was planning to do a, a, a meeting to d sort of decide on upcoming sort of plans uh, involving the Tokyo government, which is paying for most of the Olympics, and the uh, Japan Olympics president. And the Tokyo governor said, well, you know, if Mori's going to be there, it's going to be sending a bad signal if I'm there, so I'm not going to attend meetings with him. Uh, which basically, you know, she is the, the piggy bank for the Olympics, you know, running this. Uh, so it's pretty much her, of all the people that started piling in on Mori that you know he really had to step down. Um, it was really uh, it, w it was the Tokyo governor Koike who really put in the final dagger, the decisive dagger that actually did it and, and forced him during uh, midway through the week uh, to resign. He had, he had initially said, "Yeah, I thought about resigning." I asked all the women, "Hey, tea lady, do you want me to resign?" And oh no, you know, <laughs> they all told me that they 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 that they couldn't live without me. Uh, and they wanted me to hit them again. So more or less, you know, he, he was like adamant that, you know, women love him and that he, he needed to stay on even though he had offered uh, graciously to resign. But it turned out that uh, people not in positions <laughs> reporting to him, when they were given the freedom, everybody agreed it was a good idea for him to resign, and he did. However, there was more drama. Um, not only, um, so, so when they're talking, okay, if he's resigned, who are they going to replace him with? And as discussions about uh, who would be replaced, and they were asking the government, the government said, oh, well, now we have to look into it and think about it. And the Tokyo government, they asked, oh, well, we should look into who, who would be a good replacement. The Tokyo Olympic Committee suddenly announced, we've found the person, uh, don't worry, we, we, we've found the replacement. The replacement will be the um, even more sexist and one year older than Mori, uh, best friend of Mori, <laughs> this guy called Kawabuchi, who, who basically set up the J-League soccer thing in Japan and ran the Judo Association. Um, lo lots of gaffes, lots of scandals, f equally sort of problematic as a choice, and was handpicked by Mori to, succe to succeed him with a similar track record. And everyone was kind of like, well, you know, that doesn't look like an improvement. <laughs> And then uh, the the Sky Kawabuchi, who who was who, 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 who the Olympics just declared, oh, we've picked the guy. It's going to be this guy. Um, he was on TV saying, yeah, I talk with Mori, and we we talk together about this whole thing and how unfair it is and uh, the terrible discrimination that he was suffering for you know people picking on him just for being old. And he cried at having to resign, and I cried with him. So I'm going to be the new president, and I'm going to appoint Mori as a special advisor. <laughs> And everyone was looking on dumbfounded, saying, uh, oh my god, this is actually like almost worse. Um, and again, um, appar apparently what happened was um, this went on for about a day, and then the government said, uh, yeah, we are vetoing <laughs> we, are, we are vetoing that guy becoming the new president. So no, Mori doesn't get to decide how this ends. And, and the Tokyo governor as well piled in and, and absolutely not. No, it's got to be appar apparently... Well, this is the funniest part. So the government and, and, and the IOC itself, the IOC suggested a, a joint chairperson, um, someone to, you know, and, and that it should be a woman. And the government said as well that they should be, the replacement should be a woman or someone to represent diversity. Tokyo governor said it even more plainly that there should be a, a female chairperson. So yeah, when the Olympic Committee came out after all of this, after the, the Kawabuchi was, name was put forward and got it immediately shot down in flames, he was told by the press, he didn't know about it uh, until he was being told by people interviewing him. Oh, and then, footnote on that, so after, after Kawabuchi found out that he was going to be vetoed by the government, he announced that uh, he had decided not to accept the role. <laughs> so he did a reverse Costanza. He said, you know, I didn't want the job in the first place, was his final point. So then the committee had to go and explain uh, <laughs> you had to go and explain. Um, can I show this GIF? This is such an awesome GIF. I, I need to show this. Um, so they needed to explain that, um, you know, we are, um, we are going to look for a new appropriate chairperson for the Olympic Committee. Uh, and so as they announced this to the world that the Tokyo Games, they're not sexist, they, they see women equally and they're going to find an appropriate woman chairperson to take over this. Um, this video came out, you could see there's a, oh, they're coming out with a woman, is, is she going to be the new chairperson? Perhaps she is. There's the person from the committee who's going to make an announcement, he's being told to go to a seat. But that woman who went out first, yeah, she could be the new chairperson. There she is, she's holding a chair, she is a chairperson. They fulfilled the mission, they did exactly what the Olympics told them to do. She is the new Olympic chairperson, she's going now. That was all that she had to do. Her job was looking after the chair. I think that was a translation problem. <laughs> uh, 
welcome to Japan, one step forward and two steps back. So yes, they, they, there are rumors now that the Olympics minister uh, is probably going to step in to the role. Uh, and uh, yeah, she's just going to take the whole thing over. I mean, the whole thing's being uh, kept on life support with government, with, with central government and Tokyo taxes. But that was that was a thing that happened. That was just remarkable. That was a literal interpretation of wanting a, a woman chairperson. Uh, and while all this was going on, the Olympics, the official Olympics account, uh, decided to update their banner. <laughs> Beijing 2022, just one year to go. So uh, as far as they're concerned, Tokyo isn't even happening anymore. Um, and yeah, I suppose they were kind of doing Tokyo a favor by at least reminding us that, yes, well, Japan may be the uh, sexist games. The um, <laughs> uh, At least they're not in the middle of carrying out a genocide. Um, so, you know, Tokyo's got that going for it now that we all remember that actually it is less than a year until the Winter Olympics in Beijing. And how in the hell are we doing the Olympics in Beijing with everything happening over there right now? You know, Japan doesn't look so bad anymore. Uh, incidentally, the interim chairperson of the Olympic Committee, while they try to find the permanent, the new replacement, is going to be an 85-year-old head of the Keidan Ren. Uh, mitarai. So basically, it's the, the, the age of the people have got 83, 84, 85, it's increased. And when uh, Mori announced his resignation, he actually did make the statement, that, um, you know, that this has really taught him a lesson about discrimination, about the sort of discrimination people get just for being old. Um, yes, I mean, he's halfway there. He halfway got the point. He learned that discrimination is bad, but only when it's directed towards himself. Uh, <laughs> This whole thing it's been it's been a busy week uh the unintentional entertainment value i think i think like i was on monday saying i'm not going to tweet any more about maury or any more about this uh, and the drama just kept coming and uh, seriously someone someone's got to make a movie out of this it's just uh it's awful and funny at the same time and that is what's happening with the olympics i'm i'm sick of it seriously and, and honestly this whole thing just shows it, it just needs to be put out of its misery i think the olympics actually had the right idea well not in having the olympics in china but just in the idea that we should move on anyway so that's what's happening with the olympics and there is hilly peewee to say hey the chicks should just get over it <laughs> uh, he, he's turning out to be on the wrong side of a lot of key decisions